when when I try to start like coaching badminton, the first things that I don't know if you hear about, I'm sure that you, if you hear by some other coaches too, you have to make sure that person's character will fit into badminton, mm -hmm. right? If you don't have that type of character, then you probably won't fit to the badminton. That means that you cannot, you know, do well. Mm -hmm. See, you, you have to like running yeah. on court and yeah. you have to be lonely yeah. <laughs> by yourself. And then you have to be disciplined all the time. All the high performance athletes that they will learn is how to be disciplined. When they do in training, you, you're really tiring too. When you do the Sunday morning fitness, you're tired. You will say, ask everyone, why I have to wake up in 9 a.m. Why I have to do the, my fitness 9 a.m. in the morning? Usually Sunday, you're off school. You can sleep in, but yeah. no, 9 a.m. You have yeah. to be here. Then people will say, that's stupid. Okay, a lot of club they want to follow the fitness, but they will start at 2 o'clock because right. no kids that they want to wake up that early to attend the 9 a.m. training. Yeah. So Jennifer is stupid. I don't know why she can do that, but I can do that. But she if I train you really tough in here, then when you compete, it's really easy, yeah. right? That means that you, if you join the team, if you be tough, be disciplined, you, if you can survive in my team, that means that you can survive in, in the world. <laughs> Everyone that they, they train really well, but at the tournament they cannot like execute and perform what they learn from training. Right. So I create um, some of the questions, and then see that they can you know more understanding, and we talk about those like mental stuff. And then I have to guide them to if you want to become a champion, then you have like what you should do. But because you 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 probably train like 30, 40 hours per week. But if you cannot perform at the tournament, then you cannot become a champion. Mm -hmm. That's very simple. But the thing is, like, in when we're playing, right, we, we spend too much time on, like, feeling, oh, you know, am I going to win? Am I going to lose? You know, these kind of questions in your mental, like, yeah, floating yeah. all the time. Yeah, yeah. Then you're not very clear in mind that you, you have to, you know, how to play. I'm like, the strategy, like, am I hitting you to clear to the back? Am I dropping you? Am I this shot, like, smashing to you? Those, like, less than one second decision that you have to make a decision. But if your timing is not, like, thinking about how you execute the coming shots mm -hmm. or make a decision where the bird coming from, where you pace the bird, then you only fear about you losing, then obviously your, 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 your brain is just like blank and then you don't know yeah. where to pace the bird. That's how you lose. If you don't fear of losing, then that means that you will try many, many times. Right. Right. But if you're afraid, then you don't want to, you would stop trying. You're not going to talk to them once. You have to talk to them many, many times, right? Yeah. Every time they cry, then they come to me, they will talk, and then we'll discuss it. And then what you do right, what you do wrong, and then you come back, you evaluate, and then you'll move on to the next level. I have so yeah. many kids that I have to coach. But sometimes I have to cut down a little bit is because of your health. Sometimes I don't do over, you know, like everyone asks for private, you know, and every private thing, let's say we, I did two kids just now and one hour I break it into half a month, like 30 minutes, 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. Then they want to see, they want to ask for more hours. They want to ask for more lesson from Jennifer because they see the progress during one lesson. Yeah. So, yeah. but how many, how many kids that you can coach, <laughs> yeah, right? You can't coach much. Then, then you have to be very selective and say like, if these kids are like for very motivated and work hard on training, then they will get the priority, not the talents one. Yeah. The talent is always cocky. You find a talented kid that you can find a lot, mm -hmm. but you find one hard work kid, it's very difficult. <laughs> When I take you, then I have the responsible on taking you and then see, make sure that you progress, make sure you win at the tournament, mm -hmm. right? But I'm not like grabbing you and get your training fee and then we just put you on the side and training with the crappy players. That so this is not what I want. And all the parents that always come to me, oh, you look at that coach, like, you know, he, he moved to a bigger house or he's driving a Mercedes. Mm -hmm. And then that coach is driving like some very expensive, right? Like um, a Jeep or something. And then when I look at myself, like I would say, am I driving? Or should I buy a, 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 a Mercedes? But I said, what that for? Yeah. Right. And then if I can coach another more players to qualify 2024 Olympic, I think I'm more happy than I'm driving a BMW. 
because if I try to train a um, a player who qualified to Pan Am number one, one of the quali quali qualification for the Olympic, then I s I'm not saying that's like re really easy, but I do know the way how to train them right. to achieve this goal. If they want to listen to me, if they want to follow my instruction. There's so many difficulties in doing running business, running the team, and so competitive here. Mm -hmm. As that I, I continue not giving up, I continue doing it. Then I, I'll move on, and then I don't give up, and then I move on. Then I see my dream. Then my dream is like become one of the Olympic coach to coach at uh, 2024. Yeah. Right. And I think this is my dream. If I can march out with the Canadian team in 2024, that's my dream.